Hi, John McElroy here talking all things automotive. Today I'm talking with Brad Tolley. He's the chief executive officer of a company called CSP. Some people may recognize that name, some may not. The company's gone through some changes, but here you are and it sounds like you're going strong. Yeah, uh, hi John, thank you, uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's exciting. I've been here a little over five months myself and so uh, We've uh, rebranded ourselves, as you mentioned, and so CSP, it's an exciting time. Uh, it's automotive, it's our life. And you're into composites and you make all different kinds of things. Take us through a little bit, what kind of composites is CSP involved with? Sure. Um, the Backbone has been uh, around for about 50 years and it's come from various avenues that were consolidated over time. And so we are in, um, just resin-based uh, materials with glass, typical glass fibers. We do a few other composites, but we do a lot of uh, underbody components. We'll do a lot of structural, uh, uh, like pickup bed type components. Um, and then we do a lot of uh, body panels. So we'll do uh, roof systems and hood systems, fenders, things like that as well. And uh, we'll even do these uh, fully painted class A level uh, capabilities. Yeah, I'd like to get into some of that. Uh in a minute here, but uh, weight reduction, still very important for the OEMs. Yeah, that's really where composites, you know, take a lead. So obviously uh, weight is a big deal for us. And there are other attributes, I would say that's always going to be the predominant. And so not only um, are we going after the applications that need weight, but we're also, we also formulate our own material. So that's a big part of where we continuously put in a lot of technology, a lot of formulations to keep getting lighter and lighter. With so material. CSP has its own formulation, different grades of uh, composites, we depending do. on the application? Yeah, so we have, uh, we have some really smart chemists in our company, and they continue to work on different, uh, we do all of the, the resin formulation itself, so we don't buy a lot of canned anything. So from the glass to the resins, our teams are really uh, making different composites, and so the goal, it's again, weight is the predominant, but there's other reasons that you want to do formulations, you know, flame resistance and all these other things. But uh, yeah, so we come up with constantly new materials and then strength comes in as well. So when you make big roof systems, it's got to be strong, but weight is huge for us. So sure, because in a roof system, you don't want a high center of gravity, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do. And composites are also typically more capable of thermal loads too. So you imagine a big panel sitting out in the sunlight. Um, some plastics, I'll just say plastics in general, can't handle that load and you'd start to see the waivers and it would bounce, whereas these composites are basically like a metal, basically like aluminum or steel, so. And where do we stand with uh, uh, carbon fiber? There was, if I, you go back about a decade, maybe a little bit longer than that, there was a lot of excitement on carbon fiber. Uh, is CSP involved in that? Where do you see it going? No, um, we have some applications that we will uh, buy carbon fiber. It's just not significant. Um, it's very expensive. Yeah. And it really was just fitting in certain areas. It didn't make sense to have that as a core product. Mm -hmm. um, most of our typical customers don't really want to go after something that just costs that much. It's light and it's, you know, it's cool stuff and right. it's particular application. You might see a a wing or a trim, you know, piece in carbon fiber, but it just, it's not really enough to so what have are your, impact. Are, are your chemists working on lighter weight composites that don't involve the expense of carbon fiber? Yes. So we have a um, tough class A line um, where we've made various levels. You think of the specific gravity or the weight of the material itself. And so over time, they continue to come up with new materials getting lighter and lighter. And so, and I am not a chemist, so I'm ME by background, so I'm often uh, on my own here. But you have the inner materials and you have the glass materials and you have resin. And so they'll do combinations to get it lighter and lighter and lighter. Mm -hmm. And we've just come out with a material that we're about ready to go into production on that's actually, we call it our float material. Specific gravity less than one, it will literally float. So neat part is, is that this works in the exact same molds works in the exact same process that we do today, paints just as well. And so just another evolution of us trying to keep finding new materials. Yeah, no, no, that's very interesting what you're saying. And so an automaker or who's ever making, are, are these body panels that they're yeah. going to be? Yeah, So it, 
just change the formulation. You don't have to change any of your tooling. Yeah, that's incredible. That's incredible, right? Yeah, it's a really big deal. And so we, we're pretty excited about that. You know, one of the areas I didn't mention, so we also deal in heavy truck. Mm -hmm. And so we looked at um, two case points just to give you a background on it. We looked at a truck where we make um, hood roof systems and then the big sleeper cabs. Yeah. And against our own material, we can take 120 pounds roughly out of those two materials, which sounds amazing. I mean, it is a big deal. That's more than amazing. That's yeah. stunning. That's a lot of weight. Yeah. And you think of your fuel haulers and things like that, where that's actually more fuel that you can add and that. So not every truck cubes out or has weight issues, but when it comes to selling more material like that, mm -hmm. that's more value. So things like that are kind of neat. Um, we have a car where we have a lot of content on today and just again, matching our own material. It's about 24 panels that we do. And that's just roughly about 53 pound reduction, which would be pretty significant. That's, that's I, I, you know, in this industry, yeah. they fight over every gram. Yeah. So to say that you can pull more than 50 pounds out is, that's, yeah. I, um, I'm super surprised. Yeah, so we're pretty excited. And you know, you have to go through all your trials, make sure that it runs through all the, the tool life and the machine life and you know, all the manufacturing studies that you have to do. The product itself is fantastic. We believe it's gonna, it, to produce the exact same way. So we're making it now in greater and greater volumes just to, to do that final validation. Very interesting. Um, do you think we might move to see more vehicles with plastic bodies then? You know, I've always, in my last company, we, we were a lightweight company and I believe is true for our industry is that we're always going to be a mixed material industry. There's just no way that one's gonna take over and do everything. And so I, I do see that. Um, certainly, when the industry was leaning towards EVs, <laughs> yeah. you could see a lot of covers and other areas inside vehicles where composite housings were important. Uh, battery housing, so we, we make materials that are flame resistant and can handle thermal runaways and things like that. So you can see these uh, having more and more space inside EVs, but even in the current cars today, that we're constantly finding we compete against aluminum, we compete against thermoplastic. So we're fighting always back and forth in these spaces. Mm -hmm. You know, there may not be as much pressure to produce EVs, but I don't think they're going away. Yeah, I don't either. And, and yeah, I think hybrids may take a stronger position again, right. like we all kind of thought would happen in the first place possibly, uh, but that still requires uh, electric you know, capability and electric production as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I agree. Uh, there's uh, a big push in the industry right now for more affordable vehicles. You know, the I industry sort of bumped up against what the average household can afford. But the best way to take cost out is to design it out. And if you can combine parts together to reduce your part count, assembly time and the like, it's all for the good. Composites lend themselves to parts consolidation. Is this something that your customers are talking to you about? It is. So we we're getting a lot of discussions on mid-cycle enhancements and next gens where uh, a lot more modularity i think is going to play a key role and then again as you had mentioned these things the lighter the better a lot of these panels are high up high up panels the ability to have one block and simplify it but then be able to have different options is a big deal as well and so designing it with that modularity is pretty much what auto's been after for a long time mm -hmm. So Brad, what am I missing here? What, what else should the audience know about what CSP is doing? Um, it's a great question. <laughs> so with, with the change of, uh, of new ownership, there's just a lot of uh, teams getting to know each other and working through. So there's a lot of things internally on what I would say, and I had mentioned this a little bit when we were chatting, that I think the composite world is still... Uh, it still has a lot of art in our manufacturing process. And so I think a lot of the standardization tools that we need to bring in, I think we can still uh, improve our, our process stability. You know, the, the material itself, you don't bang out a million of these parts. These are typically 30,000 to 120,000 kind of space. So it's still a little bit niche. It fits in that, that space right there. You know, so for us, it's just getting better and better at the process of making those parts without waste. Mm -hmm. And I still think there's a lot of room in, in, in this space for that. Right, you know, you, you say it's a little bit niche, but 
you know, unless you're talking about super high volume products, you know, Ford F-150, Toyota Cam, or, uh, yeah, Camry and the like, uh, most of the market is uh, fits within the, the numbers that you were talking about there. I think we got lucky in that space because honestly, the platforms have now, to your point, they've divvied themselves up to much smaller than what we would have ever seen in the past. So it fits perfectly in terms of the typical volume that we produce. Yeah, yeah. you're right on. Yeah, uh, you know, the old rule of thumb that I remember was that if you were doing 125,000 vehicles or less, it was smarter to go with composites than going with steel, say. Is that, is that still kind of the rule of thumb? Yeah, I think so. It, it's machine utilization on something that makes a million and you make 100,000. For us, that's filling up our lines. Right. And that's filling up our processes, our bonders, our mold machines. Uh, a set of molds versus having four sets of molds. So yeah, it, it fits perfectly for us. Mm -hmm. Real good. Brad, thanks for your time. Very interesting uh, that CSP is into all these different things that seem to align with where the industry is going. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. I'm excited.